Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, CQG Supercharged. My name is Marcus Kwan, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's agenda includes a 20 or so minute presentation from our panelists, then five to 10 minutes for questions. And I wanna mention a few housekeeping items. If you, if you have any questions during the webinar, please enter them into the Q&A section window at any time during the presentation. We'll have the panelists answer them at the end. If the presentation is full screen, you can find the Q&A in the WebEx toolbar at the top of your screen in the drop-down menu on the far right. If you're having any sound issues, please contact the host via WebEx chat. And we'll be recording today's webinar, and it will be posted within 48 hours uh, to the events section on news.cqg.com. To frame up what we're going to be covering today, uh, there's many factors that have been emerging uh, that affect this area of performance. Uh, market data breadth and depth and volumes have been rapidly expanding. Computer technologies are getting faster and are constantly changing. Software and hardware need to be, continue to be in sync to optimize performance. And for the end, customer hardware choices are getting more and more diverse and, and confusing. The CQG customer continues to be the articulate trader that wants to push more through the system to do things more systematically, utilize custom studies and conditions. And these types of things require a good bit of computing power particularly when trying to draw correlations across markets or to do deep technical analysis. Customers continue to look for an edge, whether it be an idea or the technology, whether it be back end, network, or front end, and that's why we're here today. This panel of experts is constantly looking for ways to optimize performance, whether it be for the overall CQG ecosystem a particular trading system or an individual customer's machine. I've had the privilege of learning from and collaborating with each one of these panelists, and so it's great to get this cross-section of the company together uh, and bring some uh, diverse perspectives together. So I'll introduce each of our panelists. Uh, Joe Ashton has been with CQG 17 years and is a manager on the customer support team and manages the alpha and beta testing programs. She works with customers on a daily basis and she's based in our Glenwood Springs office. Doug Jansen is a product specialist at CQG. As a former CTA and director of research, he's an expert at using CQG to create trading systems, custom, custom formulas, and CQG's advanced features. John Arvinitis is CQG's chief architect and recently has been named CQG's CTO. John has a roadmap for continuing to improve CQG's infrastructures and technologies. John and I recently did some off-roading this summer in Yerevan, Armenia, and you'll be excited to hear about some of the things that he has to share today as well. So let's start off with Joe and some optimization strategies for individual machines. Joe? Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. I noticed um, many names that I recognize in the attendee list, welcome all. And remember, as we're going through this information, if you have questions, send them into the Q&A and we'll grab them at the end. Um, if many of you have worked with me, you know that I like making the PC the best piece of uh, equipment you can have on your desk, regardless of what kind of equipment it is. Within 6G in 14X, um, we have allowed, you opened up and allowed you to use the onboard RAM for more efficient drawing and display of studies and such. To access that, you go in through uh, the support button in 14X down to system preferences and go to the limits tab and change. You'll see in the middle it says memory and disk space usage. You'll change 
that number to 4095 if you have um, 4 gigs or better of RAM available on your PC. I've noticed most people are running 64-bit systems now with Windows and have, you know, 8, 12 RAMs uh, or gigs of RAM available. So if you haven't made that change, it's a pretty simple change and it makes a great, build, a great difference in your operation, your day-to-day -day operation, especially if you're seeing any delays on the DOM traders, you know, the data seems kind of sticky every once in a while, this will fix that right up. While you're also on this page, you'll notice that um, we have a cache path. For folks that are running 14.7, we can open this up. What that does, that feature does, is it will allow you to store bar data local to the system during your current session. What that does is if you're looking at daily charts and you look at the same five daily charts, you only have to pull the bars once. The whole set once, they store locally. Then as you revisit that chart during the session, you will um, only have to pull two or three bars to see the whole chart. Imagine the speed. It's almost back to the satellite days when uh, first off there was a third of the data, but secondly, your data was stored locally. If you're um, running CQG on a PC, you need to make additional changes. And if you see the blue link at the bottom of this window, once you click that link, it will take you to um, the online um, access for changing the remaining items that we need to talk about here. And what we'll talk about here, this will take you to the, oops, hold on, to the Optimize Your CQG page. This is on the CQG.com website under Getting Started Specifications. On this page, it goes through step-by-step -step changes you can make within the Windows operating um, system to allow CQG to perform better. One of it is to get rid of floating menus that eats up memory. Um, another is to turn off, goes through step by step, to uh, adjust your virtual med memory to the recommended setting that Windows has. It always allocates less than it recommends for some reason. Um, I've asked around and we're all kind of like, well, because it does. That's one of those things. Another choice, um, a necessary step, is to go ahead and turn off Hibernate and Standby. If CQG is running when your system goes into Hibernate or Standby, one of the power saving components of that is to close down network connections. So that, of course, would kind of almost disconnect CQG. You wake up the PC, you're hitting the keyboard or the mouse, and CQG kind of almost comes awake. So it puts it in a predicament where it looks like it's running, but there could be comp uh, you know, compromised connection. Not a way you want to run when you're looking for on-time on data. And then last again, um, mention of the, the memory. So those are the things. Um, there's a couple other little steps that are in this on this page. But those are the main things you want to go in and make sure you've changed so that um, you, <clears throat> excuse me, so that you uh, are running in your best environment. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass this back to Marcus so he can introduce the next stage. Sure. Joe, is there a, um, back on this setting that we're seeing right here, uh, for the memory and disk usage, allow CQG IC to use a certain amount of megabytes. Is that four gigs a max, or you can set that to whatever you want? No, that is currently the max, 4,095 megabytes. Got it. Thanks. Okay. So I'd like to turn it over to Doug uh, for a little bit. He's got a couple of other settings that he typically um, 
recommends to, to users. Doug? Thanks, Marcus. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and show off the screen. Which I'm at a loss for. Ami, can you send over the ability to show off my screen, please? Okay, here we go. Okay, the the one area I'm going to talk about is and you should be seeing my screen here in a few seconds is our recalculation um, setting. Um, a number of you already know about this, but let me go ahead and just open it up and and uh, explain it. Under the setup button in the upper left hand corner, after we click on a highlight a chart, we go to chart preferences. And we have a tab here that's recalc. Now, a number of you, I'm sure, have started up your CKG sometime in the past and had all of your studies calculate to the second to last bar on the chart. At one point, we set the defaults on new CKG installations to recalc at the end of the bar. And the end of the bar means whichever time frame you're on on the chart, it's going to calc all the way up until the last historical bar, not the current one. This was brought into CQG years ago when hardware was not at the point it's where it now with, with the uh, speed of multi-threaded processors and the vast amounts of memory running under 64-bit environments. So a lot of you, um, especially with our newer alpha version, which you'll be seeing in beta shortly and general by December, I'm told, there is a vast amount of um, improvements on the calculation engine, and I think John will talk about that in a few minutes. Um, recalculating on every tick means every price movement on the chart, um, no matter what time frame, will automatically um, calculate your studies along with it. Now, for some of you that still might stress your, your current hardware, I would suggest recalculating at the first tick of every bar and then periodically. So if I'm running a two-minute chart, and this is an interesting way that you can actually use this, let's say that you're, you're trading on a moving average cross, and you want to execute in the last 15 seconds of the two-minute bar, but you don't want to see the condition or the cross cross up and back down, up and back down um, multiple periods throughout that two-minute bar. So you can come in here and you can say, update on the first tick of the bar, and then 40, whoops, not 45, but we'll say, let's say 100 seconds. So in the last 20 seconds of, of that bar, it will update and it will give you the ability to see if it's actually crosses taking place or not. So you can kind of jump the gun, not have to wait till the next bar is open to put a trade out on a uh, moving average cross or anything else that develops on the current bar. We also have some auto trade users out there that use this setting to where they are trading on the development of the bar, but they're also throttling the timing of which auto trade puts the trade out. So again, this is recalc at uh, the first tick of the bar and then periodically. And as I said, with a two minute chart, we can kind of throttle that um, intra-bar development to the last, in this case, 20 seconds of the bar. And if you do want to do it by certain markets, it's a global setting under under update global settings. You can do it market by market too. But for most of you, recalc on every tick is going to be the setting that you want to have it on. And that's pretty much what I was going to talk about. So, Marcus, I'm going to hand it back to you. Thanks, Doug. So, um, both um, Joe and Doug have been working with with a lot of you guys. Um, whenever you guys have an issue, uh, feel free to call uh, the support line. Um, uh, all of the customer support techs are, are very versed in um, helping to kind of diagnose and optimize systems. Um, and we've published some of this information also on our website. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit in that, um, so those were kind of settings that you can control as an end user, uh, but John Arvinitis is here to tell us about some of the things that uh, we've been working on in the background 
and we've kind of cleared the decks and have put performance as a priority. Um, so I'll turn it over to John. Thanks, Marcus. So as Marcus indicated, that uh, we have made it a priority. And over the course of the last couple of years, um, really it has been the last couple of years, we've been really kind of retooling the, the architecture itself within CQGIC in a migratory path, um, getting it enabled, getting it into a, a good state where we can begin to start leveraging uh, our threads better and multiple cores better. So as a result, what we've done is, is we're in a position now where we're starting to see the fruits of all that labor. And what you'll see is that not only will we be utilizing more threads um, uh, and more cores of your system, but we'll also be utilizing them more efficiently. So it was kind of a two-pronged approach. Let's, let's make sure we can use them, and let's make sure we're not abusing them as we're using them. So I'm sure everyone's you know, looking at that bottom line down there that says two, time, two to three times improvement in data handling. Um, what that means is, is that not only are we able to offload the processing as, as data is being handled within CQGIC, um, the code itself has been optimized. So looking at ITL, ITL2, ITL2 is a calculation engine. It's responsible for you know, all your strategy calculations, um, your, your graphs, uh, you know, Q formulas, um, all of that. That code has been um, scrutinized <laughs> at the very, very low levels uh, and improved, plain and simple. So what we've seen, and depending on, uh, you know, your configuration and, and what types of strategies you're using, um, you will see some very, very impressive results. And in other conditions, you'll see some good results. Um, we're not finished. We will continue to be working in these areas and improving the experience that you, that you have um, both today and in the future. So what I am going to show you is, is some tests that we run on CQGIC. Uh, we basically take high market date rates, um, you know, historical high days where we know people have had problems in the past, and we replay them at higher rates through the client in order to understand how far behind we get and um, what types of issues people are running into with various types of uh, strategies and equations built in to, the, to, the, uh, to your pages. So here's an example where, you know, the 13.5 version, you can see there in the dashed line, um, is basically what our uh, version of the year is that's out in production right now. So in this particular test, you know, it was running about seven seconds behind, you know. And in the 14X versions that are currently out in alphas and betas right now, um, we're seeing much, much better results here. Now, again, these are different configurations with different types of uh, strategies and different, and, and different graphs. So, you know, time-based bars, you're not going to see as big of a difference. But in, you know, trade flow and CVB bars, you're going to see a better uh, results. So, um, you know, to mark studies and things like that actually will have much better results um, than in previous versions. And here's another one where you see some pretty decent improvement. And this is my favorite. <laughs> um, things get really bad. Um, and again, we're replaying a, a particular market condition, um, but at higher rates um, in order to stress it even worse. And that pretty much covers it. So and to be, go ahead, Doug. Uh, Marcus. Let me just quickly add this: for those of you out there that are running on the general 13.5 version, we can give you the beta. The beta is actually um, it's in really good shape. So the alpha we do have, we do reserve for a small group of alpha testers, but I'm told the beta can go out. So for those for those of you that are seeing some latency issues. Um, Certainly, let's move you up to beta. Go ahead and give Joe or I a call, and, and we'll get you there. Go ahead, Marcus. So, uh, John, I just want to clarify some of the items uh, or what we're seeing in these graphs, right? So, um, so if you flip back to the first one, uh, is is what this graph indicating that after say four seconds, 
um, so we're looking at 13.5. After four seconds, the machine is seven seconds behind, and then it recovers uh, yeah. over time. Yeah, not quite. The scale's in 20-second increments, so it's, it's a little confusing there. So um, this is a longer, these are longer period tests. Um, but yes, what, what you'll see is you'll see these, these spikes where we're seven seconds behind, and it, and basically, you know, your market data is, is, is running through the calculation engines, and those calculations take time. So over time, you know, the, the market data is coming in faster than the calculation engine can actually calculate from the previous market data update. So you get this this backlog of processing, um, and that's that's what was happening. Um, so, you know, combined, and, and this is really a result of two things. Again, this is a result of changing the way our threading architecture works, and how our threads are being managed, as well as optimizing the code. Does that answer your question? And, and so, yeah, so. If we're looking at this under a thousand milliseconds, does that basically mean it's not behind at all? Um, there, there is some delay, and obviously there's always some delay, right? You, you have to do some calculations. So the issue is, is how quickly is the market data coming in um, behind it, right? So we can only mm -hmm. use so many cores. We can only do so much processing. Some processing has to be done serially versus in parallel. Um, so there's only so many things we could do. So in these particular tests, and these these tests, um, just to be clear, this is these are not like single chart tests. These are pages with multiple charts and multiple calculations on them, and you know multiple DOMs going at the same time, all sorts of things going on. Um, you know, a simple user in general um, really shouldn't see much of a delay. Um, occasionally they do, but that has also been Im improved upon. So, you know, watching the DOM and having the DOM freeze uh, has also been addressed in this release and also will be much, much smoother in this release. Um, here I'm just showing some results of some internal tests that we run um, of some very, very complicated pages that we have in-house. Okay, that's good to clarify. That was one of the questions that was coming in. Uh, another one, uh, another question we have from Thomas is, um, can you go a little bit more into depth about the uh, the threading changes? Are the charts in a separate thread from the data feed and also from the other components like ITL? Um, historically, they have not been. Going forward, they will be. So in in the 14x line, um, you know, if you rely on DOM heavily, and you know your charts are there for you know some analytics and, um, you know, figuring out your strategy for the day or what you, you know, feel like trading that day, but you really do your trading off the DOM, um, you know, high volume historically has caused delays in DOM. And I think uh, this is where uh, the question was coming from. Um, yeah, the calculations were in line with, with DOM updates, and they will no longer be. So your DOM will update and move. Uh, much faster and much more independently than um, the chart calculations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's saying that some of the biggest lags um, he's seen has come from having T-flow bars and about uh, eight charts open and then also six or eight DOMs open. Yeah, it should be in much better shape, much better shape. Um, the early results that I saw um, when I was at the development office um, of the threading project results, um, you know, they were running a, a high uh, market day at like seven times uh, side by side between uh, the older version and the newer version. And the newer version didn't miss a heartbeat. Um, the DOM was keeping up. And, we, you know, obviously we have our internal metrics and our internal uh, ways of measuring this. Um, and the new version was keeping up perfectly fine without any problems. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Thomas is saying that the T-flow bars using tick data uh, were the were the ones that seemed to have the biggest impact. I don't know if the tick data versus the um, uh, standard bar data makes a difference. Anything that's not fixed time based. So this is why T-flow uh, was impacted, um, and, and the bar indexing and how it works internally. The, uh, anything that was not fixed time-based um, was improved, uh, in some cases dramatically. 
So we should you should see he should see a, a much much better results in uh, in 14x. Interesting. Okay, so w when you're talking about um, the amount of um, charts and analytics that were on these pages that were being tested, do you know if QSS uh, or QSS 2.0 will receive that benefit as well? Or is QSS. that totally separate because it's real time? Yeah, it is. It is uh, separate right now. Um, the improvements, um, actually, that we're starting to tee up, and unfortunately, the next release are going to go further, and we'll begin to start leveraging these into um, further components within CQGIC. So the frameworks, and this is what we've been working on in the past for the past two years, is the frameworks and the overall handling, where some of the other projects in this coming year will be much uh, much quicker to implement and easier to implement. Um, and we'll see, start to see some benefits in, uh, you know, in monitors and QSS, um, in, uh, in in various other displays, um, including even, like I said, we did the, uh, you know, DOM will also uh, probably get a, get another bump in uh, next year's release. So, I, I, you know, I don't want to go too far into what what's coming next year because that doesn't really help you this year. Um, but this year, you know, you shouldn't see anything in QSS. Um, now, overall, like I said, you will see a benefit with regard to our utilization levels. So something that may have actually pinned your CPU, pinned one of your cores before may not pin it anymore. So you will still get that benefit on the QSS side, if that makes sense. So we're, we're, we're not going to be abusing it as we have, and I know that's a strong word, but that's reality. I mean, we were working, working those cores pretty hard at times. And uh, with the 14x release, we will not be. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question from Steve. Will my execution time improve from buy to sell interval by updating to the new version 14? Not sure if I understand. Steve, could you no. clarify th that question for us a little bit? And let me move on to the next one um, from Bob, um, which is an interesting question. What about when you add studies to the DOM as far as the delays go? If it's multi, if the DOM is on a separate thread, but the uh, study calculations are on a different thread, will you, is there any kind of impact? Will you see, is there any possibility for those things to get out of sync at all? There is a Does slight possibility sense? for them to get out of sync, yeah. Um, there is a slight possibility for them to get out of sync. But okay. here again, instead of relying on a single core, you're relying on multiple cores. Mm -hmm. So if I understand that when you're talking about QSS, when you're talking about um, uh, the DOM being on a separate thread, while in this version we might not have uh, done actual work to those, by offloading um, uh, some of the, the charting calculation onto a separate thread or utilizing those cores better, the, the core that was um, uh, u utilized for those other things is offloaded to where you should see a generalized improvement. Is that correct? Right, right, right. So okay, um, so Steve, let's think about it this way. Um, so in in the 13x model, a price update would come in. It would go through the ITL, calculate all the strategies, and then update your DOM in one shot. In 14x, that will get split, and both will be done in parallel. Does that make it easier to, to, to think about? So instead of having to wait for things to go through on the DOM, it will get updated in parallel at the same time as the strategy. So even when displaying your strategy information, you don't have to wait to update the DOM. So they're, they're both being done in parallel now. Uh -huh. Okay, so Steve is clarifying his question here, which is, um, He's asking about the difference in milliseconds or microse microseconds from um, 
buying on one side of a spread than doing the opposite side. Um, so, Steve, if if I if you're using our spreader, if your question is about our spreader, all of that logic is sitting server side anyway. So. Um, the the difference is uh, that John is talking about here, which are client side, um, don't have any effect on your on your buy and sell strategy because that logic is already sitting on the server um, in our colo, right right next to the exchange. John, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, but that's my understanding there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, that that is uh, up at the, and it's actually at a very, very close, close to the exchange. So not only is it co-located, it's in, in literally the component that talks to the exchange is where this logic happens. It's it's a, it's a wonderful architecture. Um, I like it a lot. Um, so if, if that's what he's talking about, you know, say hedging is uh, one side of the leg into the other side, um, that is all all executed on the server side. None of this is is involved at all. Okay. All right, so we have another question from Thomas. Any planned improvements on SIGIVAL for threads? And um, will that allow for non-time-based bar testing like TFLOW or CVB inside SIGIVAL? Um, with regard to threading in the SIGIVAL, it is one of the items on the possible list for next year. Um, and, and basically being able to leverage uh, the threads better there as well. Um, I, I can't say for sure whether or not it's going to make it or not. Um, it's all time and effort, and uh, you know it definitely is something with, that was identified as important and a good possibility to do. Mm -hmm. And Thomas, if you're not aware, also we have made some uh, interface and functionality improvements to SIGIVAL. Um, if you check out our new site, news.cug.com, um, the product manager that worked on that, and also Doug worked on that project as well, um, they've written a article about it um, uh, talking over the features that were implemented there. Um, we have a question from uh, any improvements coming up for chart overlay, being able to overlay T-Flow with a hidden time frame or time-based chart, um, and uh, to be able to apply time-based custom indicators uh, to range-based T-Flow bars, for example, which is today not quite possible. I don't know if you have any insight there. I do uh, not. Yeah, well, you know, um, Thomas, on that one, we'll, um, um, I'll have uh, somebody respond to you directly on that one. And um, what kind of framework updates, John, are still missing that will help down the road once the framework, and then once the framework is complete, um, then will we be focusing on improvements to existing tools like exotic bar types? Etc. Okay, from a from a framework perspective, for the most part, everything is in place. It's now leveraging it, um, and uh, the one does not necessarily preclude the other with regard to focusing on other areas. So, with regard to chart types and new charts that are coming in, I mean, we do have other things, and I know that's not the focus of this particular uh, webinar, um, but there are other chart types coming in in 14x. Um, so that work you know, tends to happen with different teams. So the good news is we have enough resources to actually accomplish both of those things, and it, and it boils down to a priority order. Um, so depending on the type of bars that you're looking, you know, charts that you're looking for when you say exotic bar types, um, you know, I, I don't know what that would qualify as, um, but that should, those requests should end up uh, either going through support to Vesna or to Vesna directly. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, I'm not sure if you're aware about, um, uh, we are adding, in this upcoming version of CQG 2014, we are adding uh, three additional bar types, um, uh, Renko, Range Bar, and Heinkenashi, as well as sub-minute uh, bars. 
So be looking for that. Um, I think that those will be interesting, potentially interesting for you. Um, and then we have a question from AJ. Any changes to synthetic spread charting? Will T-Flow be available on spreads? That might also be a, a question for um, for Vesna. We'll, we'll pass that one along as well in terms of um, new charting features. Yeah. I don't know if anything. OK. Yeah, I, I see a lot of you guys are, um, are alpha and beta customers, so I'm probably preaching to the choir here on a lot of this stuff. Um, any other questions um, for John or Joe or Doug? Doug, you've been running some of these early versions, and what has your impression been as a as kind of a uh, expert user? Well, it's <clears throat> excuse me, it's um, it's pretty much a night and day difference from where we were back in January of this year. And it, it, I had some studies, or I should say, not, uh, a uh, a methodology that I had put together this time last year, and had a uh, rough time displaying it on CQG charts. And went to the owner and got his approval to get some work done in the back end to see what was causing the issues. And over the course of the last nine months, we went from being able to run one or two charts to now multiple charts, different time frames, and now even auto trading on this methodology. And in the improvements not only were, of course, beneficial for what I was looking to get out of CQG, but across the board, I had trade systems that would bog the system down, um, created months and years ago that I could run now. Um, we would go through economic number releases to where the processor now doesn't jump. Um, on my four core processor here at work and I have an eight core at home. And so it's nice to see that these improvements weren't, again, just for this set of uh, indicators I have, but it's pretty much has um, done an excellent job of uh, getting CQG to run. And we did go through some periods of time in the last couple of years to where, you know, your number would come out and I would cringe because, you know, there'd be times where we, you'd hope that the latency that sometimes presented itself would CQG would catch up fast, and but you knew that you would probably hit a, a period of latency, and and it looks like we're, we've got that behind us, which is really good news. It's nice to see the uh, um, numbers come out, uh, the data line or the bandwidth get um, you know get heightened up with data, and and CQG be able, being able to uh, process that data fast enough. So it's it's probably the largest set of improvements I've seen for the. 15 plus years I've been working here. And so that's, you know, a pat on the back for the guys who went in here and, and into the code and, and really found the uh, the way to improve uh, the performance. I wish I had a benchmarking utility I could show you, but I'm, I'm not on that side of the uh, equation to where I run benchmarks, but certainly watching the charts and trading, there's a huge improvement. Yeah, that's what, when it, that's why, um, you know, I think it was valuable for John to show these charts here. This is, even though it's not, um, it, it's not like a traditional benchmarking. I think that um, you know, they're they're charts that people can take a look at and, and realize um, and translate that into what what they experience on a on a you know when an economic number comes out. Um, some of these changes. Um, I believe you should be able to start seeing in the either 14x8 beta or 14x9 beta at the latest, I, I believe. Um, and no, it's, uh, really, in, it's, it's 14.7 is where the bulk of them have come out. Right. We have them available now if anybody would like to run. And let me say these pages were power users that traditionally fell minutes behind. So these pages were are donated by them for us to understand what was going on, what the users were doing to do that. That's right. So um, we do have a question now. from we have a question from Bob. Um, and Doug, you might have some insight on this. Are we making changes to auto trading? 
Yes, good question. There's, you know, auto training is, I don't want to say it's put on hold. It's, um, we'll still sign some people up if they've got some systems um, up and ready to go. And we'll go over the nuances. Um, nuances meaning that there's some issues we know of. And let me just do a quick history on auto trading. Auto trading was developed back in the early 2000s with the advent of the electronic market starting. Um, CQG had a proprietary trading desk in Moscow and one in Denver that I traded on for six years. And the good thing about it is is not only we were a proprietary desk with the firm's money, but we were the, the alpha testers on a lot of new material that has come out in CQG, including the auto trader. It was never intended to go outside of an in-house um, use. And we finally have come to the conclusion, of course, with demand and everything, that we need to get this ramped up. So um, there is a large project underway that's going to start at the end of this year. And estimates are Q2 of next year is when we're going to have the revamped um, auto trading version with all of the little nuances and fixes put into it. And in, in its current state, it's 90% efficient. I could go through the list of, of, of a handful of things that that I would tell a trader not to do, but um, I, you know, that's not for this call. But again, um, I would say end of Q2 is when we will start uh, um, advertising this and putting it out for uh, for public use. Great. Uh, any other questions for any of our panelists? Um, yeah, Q, um, so the question from Doug was, uh, for Doug, yeah, it's second quarter of 2014. Is what you were talking about there? Estimates. I'm, her, I'm hearing end of Q1, Estimate. but um, I'm just going to be realistic and probably say it's going to be just shortly after that. And as I said, in the meantime, if you guys want to experiment with it, we're, we are giving it, um, making it available. Of course, we suggest um, simulating um, and getting used to um, the way it works. There, but uh, certainly, if you're going to trade small, I'm fine with that. But larger sizes, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest waiting till uh, waiting till next year. Great. All right. Um, last call for, for questions. Um, there's a couple of questions that are we, we'll, that I see that are a little bit off topic, and we'll answer those directly to you guys. Um, we appreciate those. And um, yeah, you can send an email to um, directly to Doug for uh, trying out the auto trader. If you're interested in that, yes, that'll be fine. Doug at CQG.com. We normally ask that you have some systems already built um, because certainly it wouldn't it would be uh, wouldn't be beneficial to start the auto trader and then try to start building systems. So if you got some things in hand, we can certainly hook them up. All right, and as we mentioned before, I, I see a lot of you guys um, are alpha beta users. If you're not um, uh, and would like to be, uh, please contact Joe. You can reach her at joe at cqg.com or through our uh, customer support line. Um, you can uh, see a lot of the things that we've been talking about today at uh, you see news.cqg.com. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be posted, as I said, in 48 hours to news.cqg.com. If you have any questions or issues, please contact us uh, in, on the 800 number or um, links from our website. Uh, so I'd like to thank all the panelists. I appreciate your guys' time. Um, uh, audience members, thanks a lot for uh, attending. We appreciate, appreciate your time as well. Hope it was informative and uh, hope it's exciting. Um, uh, be looking forward to CQG 2014 uh, coming soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marcus.